I mean, if you just look at it on paper, when you're not playing the game, when it's not super intense for you, you have to make the quick decisions. I think the answer is obvious. You want the storm instead of like the one extra one more high archon. Templar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the one high Templar, right? So uh, definitely would have been nice if he just uh, gave up his fourth base, but he had storm ready for episode two, the second attack yeah. when the Queens came and he could have just stormed all the hiders and the links in the front. Yeah, I mean, sure, he didn't have any high temper for Storm at the first attack, but the follow-up attacks, the follow-up yeah. fights, it's almost as if he assumed Dark was all in and he just had to survive and that was it. So the one high temper was the answer, but when we look at it with all the information, looking at the third person view, it definitely was not. Yeah, so definitely makes things interesting as we are jumping into Odyssey for game number four. This is what we called, you know, Dark in that macro game was able to eventually kill Deer, the Protoss player, and make things a little bit more interesting. Doesn't look like Deer's going to be able to just quickly crush this guy with Stargate build after Stargate build anymore. Definitely not. He's definitely adapted. That was not the crispest that we've seen from Deer either with that three Stargate opening. But we are going to go into Odyssey now, guys, for game number four. Here we go, game number four. This is Odyssey. And up in the top left, our Protoss player, Deer. And of course, his opponent down to the bottom right in purple, it is Dark. Remember a few things uh, as we go into the series, SSL fans, because the first few maps were all Deer's top priority maps. Newkirk Precinct was his first choice. Missile Reef was his second. Sentient to Ire was his third. Odyssey is still his fourth, but we're going to maps now that Dark has higher priority on than Deer has. So we're moving into kind of Dark's arena in terms of what his preparation was going into this series. And also something that's become abundantly clear throughout the last three games, as the entire crowd is Dark favored. It almost feels like not a single person in this studio is cheering for Deer. That's something that can affect your mentality in a finals like this when a crowd is entire, you know, not finals, best of seven, I should say. Feels like a finals, uh, I suppose, for Deer. It's been so long since he made it this far. When everyone is cheering for uh, your opponent, it can get into your head. You could feel it, you could feel the ground shake when the oracles die, and you know they're not cheering for you in that moment. So, definitely some momentum sh could shift here now that Dark has finally won a game. And we're going on to the maps that he preferred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Newkirk and Abyssal, two of his maps, uh, Deers, that is, that he really loved to play on, whereas Ascension to Ire was Dark's first choice, was able to win on that one, and then Odyssey is his second choice, which we are on now. I think the reason is... He just wants to get into that later game, right? When you look at these two-player maps, you just are so incredibly spread apart. Even Abyssal Reef is closer than maps like Ascension to Ire and uh, Odyssey here. So, Deer, he's going to look to mix it up. Uh, we said it in the beginning of the day that we should see some crazy weird builds. Uh, Deer did surprise us a bit just by going for very crisp, you know, specific plays and builds. But this time we will have a proxy. That's right. Very likely to be a Stargate, but I suppose Deer has shown us crazier things in the past. It'll be the Stargate, though. Not as crazy as it could have been. So we're going to see fast rallied oracles at a faster timing than Dark has prepared for now for three games after scouting with his Overlord. Yeah. And if he doesn't see this, it's very unlikely that, uh, you know, he will necessarily assume that there's a Stargate on the map after not seeing the main base or not seeing one in the main base with those Overlord Scouts he's been reliant on in the first three sets. Dark was pretty good at scouting the map in a bunch of his games against Deer where he got the Lings early, especially on Abyssal Reef. I saw him just going all the way around the map, and uh, he was sending out a Ling towards the Watchtower, so I thought maybe he would send one to each and then go towards the south and maybe spot this, but... As we stand now, he actually doesn't have any idea what's really going on in the base of Deer. He has one Overlord that's slowly making its way, but that's a big main here on Odyssey. Overlord isn't going to be able to see everything in time as that Oracle is making its way out already, is yeah. about to finish up. 
You can see Dark's scouting path here is just to check the entire main base. We'll check behind the minerals first. Is already going to be dealing with this pressure with the adapts. Does Ooh. get that tumor, no cancel. And now going to be looking for a few drone kills here. Can't get into the position between the minerals that he wanted, though. So this is going to be a good trade for Dark. But look at this. Now he's going to see the Oracle, see it for the first time. He's just going to ignore that queen and target down drones, forcing lost mining time. No target here, though. Could have gotten an extra do drone, you would imagine. Gets seven, eight, and we'll walk out. Second Oracle is about to finish. Definitely fantastic damage here for Deer. Um, I love that he keeps the Adepts in the natural, just to, to draw the Queen out of position. That Adept was just like one little pixel to the north, and you can see that the Lings were enough. That could have definitely turned out to be a bit worse. Insta wall, though. Right there. Yeah. Wants to try to stop this warp gate research. We'll be unsuccessful with that as well. We'll probably have to remake the core. Does send the Oracle home, actually. Should save this now. Core is saved, so won't have to remake that one. And now, Deer in position to take a forge. We'll likely see him drop that third base very soon. And Dark is not in a terrible position from this, but it's the tempo advantage that Deer has. The ball is in his court. And I think when he swings the racket, it's going to be towards that third base now. Twilight Council does come up, though. And he is denying scouts right now. Even makes a Phoenix. So maybe this is not the Nexus follow-up, at least not with any pro production right now. It feels like he may make an empty third and do a Glaive's attack. Overlord's cleared. That is what it's looking like, for sure. Uh, we need to see what those buildings are going to do. There's the Nexus. Does start plus one, but again, that could just be on point with the Glaives and the Warp Prism. Warp Prism is being made, and it's actually Charge that is coming out of that Twilight Council, so... There's that Templar Archives. Looks like it'll be Charge Lit Archon. And the most notable missing thing from the production tab is probes. He's not building any additional workers right now. He's trying to kill workers, force Dark to drone. So uh -oh. Looks like the core will go down. That's going to be an open wall. That could get him a scout. He goes in. He will see this. Oh, such a great position for Dark here. Does see all the gateways now. Fantastic scout. Deer for just one moment, neglecting his base defenses for the weakened cybernetics core. Even sending the Oracle home now. The entire plan is revealed. He sees the uh, charge upgrade being chrono. He sees the forge. And he sees all these zealots. So he's not even halfway concerned it might be an adept attack. It's very obvious what, it's, what is happening. Saw the Templar archives. And now Dark just has to add a Bailing Nest. Even adds a Roach Warren because he's like, okay, I'm going to be fully prepared for this one. Roaches will crush this if he has enough of them. And he's got so much time to work with now. He had just so many workers already, so he knows that all he has to do is survive, and he should be able to take this game. But you can see that now that Dark is, or rather Deer is scouted, uh, he is transitioning back into some more probes. It looks like maybe he wants to do that meek follow-up of saying, oh, you got me, I guess I'll just get a, a weak third base. And oh man, this wall has been such a huge problem for our Protoss player tonight. Yeah, three times now, failing to defend the run buys. Having to tight wall the first time, second time losing the core, and now just more and more probes going down. I think Deer is forced to do an all-in. Whether he wanted to make that weak third base transition you were talking about or not is unclear, but I don't think he can do it now. This is such a puny army against the Roaches that can kite the Archons. The Zealots will be destroyed by the Banelings here. This is such a great composition. Now that he's seen everything from Dark, he's just directly countering it. We are going to see a Stasis Ward go down to try to trap Banelings, so it's already <laughs> triggered. <laughs> so is Deer so here. So triggered, man. <laughs> oh, that is that is really fantastic play out of Dark. Perfect timing. And now the Banelings are a little bit... Okay, they're going towards the north, scaring me a bit here. Okay, he just wants to bait the Banelings into the Archons. Very well done here by Deer, but I think this army is too small regardless. Everything fades away. And so do Deer's chances of taking this fourth game. It was very close, and the Archons almost did it. The Time Warp is coming down. This is desperation at its best. He knows he had to win the fight, but it's not going to happen. Mothership Core goes down. You know when you're out of shields on Archons, you're lifting Archons in a prism on a timing attack that things have gone wrong. It's going to transition now to Immortals and plus two, but the counterattack, the fourth base that Dark has, this third base is going to be so difficult to hold on to. Ravagers are at the ready. He's got the better upgrades. He will even have Roach and Bailing Speed. How could Deer hope to defend this without Psy Storm and without a large amount of units? He has half the army supply of Deer right now. Or sorry, of Dark, excuse me. Mm -hmm. These D players today. I know. 
Well, if he could trade for hours with the Archons, perhaps then. But Dark's not going to give him that time of day. Already <laughs> the lift there. Look at the War Prism. He's going to oh, get a good boy. angle here with these Archons. He gets the best fight he could have ever hoped for, but it's still not enough. Lifting again the Ravagers, and Immortal comes out as the barrier. But Dark is getting a better trade. Every single unit that dies. Phoenix desperately lifting. That's it. GG. We're, We're all tied, tied up. up. Here we go. Two to two. We got ourselves a series, ladies and gentlemen. And dear, I mean, we said it before. He was looking strong when his build works, but the second things go wrong, Dark is just in total control. Absolutely. I mean, he had this scout there with the Lings, destroying that cybernetic score. One of those things that when you see a Protoss wall like that get damaged, you always have to put it in the back of your mind of this could become a factor later on in the game. Yeah. And in this case, it did. He sneaked the Lings into the main base. Had Deer just been a little bit more on point, maybe remade the core, put a gateway to wall there. Those Lings don't scout the main base. And sure, Dark still maybe could have defended, but it would have been a totally different game. And so unfortunate now that this player is absolutely shut down. Momentum's taken away from him. Misplacing Zealots, misplacing the Adept on the wall. This is an emotional player we're talking about here, and the series feels like it's slipping away from him. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy too because we got Whirlwind up next, and already Dark has shown that he is—he has the advantage on these very big maps where he has the time to get his defenses up, to get the extra scouting, to see what Deer is doing. Seems like he has his number so far. Uh, the build was pretty standard out of Deer in terms of you know the the proxy Oracle and to follow up all in. And uh, we'll see what he has prepared for the last three games, but we're going to a commercial break. We'll be right back.